Welcome back to Saw Shake and Sisters, ladies. Let me see what time it is. We've got 30 minutes on these videos. It's 7.25. All right. Barbara Chapman, Salt Shake and Sisters. This is video number two. We're going to be studying the book of James. Video number two. And let's just, we'll pray first and we'll dive right in there, okay? Father, just uh, come in Jesus' name. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word and what you're going to speak to us. We pray that it come out clear and not a bunch of barbarous mistakes. And we give you praise in Jesus' name for what you're going to teach us today. Amen. Okay, ladies, this is Salt Shake and Sisters. And the website is www.wow-wonderword.com. The website to see these videos is www.youtube.com backslash user backslash 007 bads. All right, this is Daily Walking with Jesus. Simply, very simply, because I'm a simple person, simply sharing his word, the book of James. This is Devo and Bite Size Life Application Series. Now, I've put all these devos into like a book, okay? So I'm going to just read you. I'm going to start at the beginning and go through as if I handed you a book. And one of these days, maybe we'll have the book out there. I don't know. But I did an introduction, and let me go ahead and read some of that with you if you don't mind. The introduction. This book is the second. It's the second of many life application series to come. These books are simple, and they're daily bite-sized Bible studies, devotionals acquired during my quiet time. They're quick and easy to read as time permits in your busy schedule. I did not want to put dates or time frames in these books. To do so might discourage some of us when we think we have to get so much done every single day. Didn't want to put more demands and restrictions on there. When we miss, when we miss a day or two, we feel guilty and get under condemnation and the devil nudges just to quit reading because we've already messed up. That is not it. The whole thing is to love and encourage women and point them to the Word of God, that the Word of God would speak to them and give them a victorious, encouraging walk. This study in James took me about four months to complete. It's a small but powerful book. The words will cut deep and hurt good. You'll hear me say that a lot, too. When I started reading James, it was right after wrapping up the book of Ephesians. My intentions were never to write books. I just love to study and want to know more of my father personally and pray all the while to allow him to change me inside out one day at a time. That's what he does. He's a gentleman. I have a passion or fire that burns within my soul to share God's word and encourage other women like yourself to gain that fire and walk in victory and not be beat up all the time. You don't have to walk that way. The 11 simple steps to hearing from God and receiving revelations will always be at the back of every book. That's the foundation, what started all this that God gave me. These books start out as a daily email devotional for the Salt Shaken Sisters. Like so many I receive from God, they are, they are, we are all in a process and everything evolves. His will for my life and this ministry. I am ever thankful to have such a gift and pray that I never be lifted up in pride and God always reminds me to have a humble spirit. I work on that all the time. God, help me. I can do absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing without and through Him and the help of the Holy Spirit of God within me, my comforter, my counselor, my guide, my friend at all times. James will comfort, counsel, correct, encourage you, and some of the things that James is going to be sharing with us is this. It's going to talk about jealousy, covetousness, I got that out, friendship, judging, obedience, confidence in God, not ourselves, patience, prayer, faith, confession, pride, humility, sin, endurance, mercy, and much, much more. I pray that you will read slowly as we're going to try to read it slowly. I pray that if you had this in your hand or it's on the website and you print it out, I pray that you'd read slowly and allow the Holy Spirit of God within you help you and speak to you today as we share His Word and give you a burden and desire to study His Word and know Him better. That's the, that's the hardest ministry is to get you into God's Word and let you hear one-on-one, -on -one, first-hand from God first, instead of second-hand, the joy that somebody else has. Let Him talk to you first of all. Alright, Daily Walking with Jesus, simply sharing His Word, the book of James. 
and I told you the WOW website ministry and everything, and uh, the verse that is the birth, the foundation of everything. There's different verses as we go along, and God changes some things, but the, the verse that I hang on to all the time, and you'll hear me say this in all the videos, is Psalms 32a. This is what God told me, and this is what drives me to keep going in this ministry. To teach women how to study God's Word and receive revelation, encouragement, and walk in daily joy and victory. Praise God. All right, the mission statement is Hebrews 4.12. I'm not going to read it to save time. And then this is, you're going to look, where did Salt Shaken Sisters come from? And I told you earlier, I moved that. I was showing you the salt. Um, I'm very visual, and it's got Salt Shaken Sisters on there. And that came from Matthew 3, 13 through 16. That's Matthew 3, 13 through 16. And I won't read all the verses. There's my grandfather clock. But this is what I got. You and I are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can we be made salty again? You and I are the light of the world. Let your light shine before women, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Start shaking some salt around to get today. The salt is sharing God's word, not necessarily salt and salt shaker. That's a visual. All right, then the next, uh, the next page... What I do is I'll read a couple of verses, how many ever that, you know, God instructs me for that session, and then I'll share my heart of what it means to me personally, because I take God's Word, and I like to read it and take it personally, so it's going to change and transform me. So, it's been formatted in such a manner that there's the verses, and then there's my heart, and I've done the book like that, so I think what I've got here, I'm sharing from my heart before we get into the lesson, so let me read that to you if you don't mind. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name today, and I humbly ask you that if anyone reading these verses in James and does not know you as their personal Savior, you, Holy Spirit of God, would deal with them right now. I pray you do so with an unending and unconditional love through your spirit of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. I pray they don't take offense at anything your word says. I pray no offense is taken from sharing my heart. It is my desire as yours to see everyone saved. Thank you for eternal salvation and the freedom you give each person to make a choice, accept or reject you, heaven or hell. I pray as you read this prayer today, you choose life. Father, lead them to your arms after receiving you as their Savior. Guide them to the right church, the right person to mentor and help them grow in your grace and word. As I close this prayer, Father, I do not, I do want to share and point them to the church I attend and the women's ministry at this time. So right now, today is September the 15th, 2011. Um, I took today off so we can do some ministry. And my church is the Cowboy Church in Bandera, Texas. It's right in the River Cowboy Church. So come on out and uh, fellowship with us. It's growing. It's new. It's about a year old. Pastor Jeff Bishop and Kim Bishop is his wife. And the website where you can go and see uh, the sermons and what's going on all the time is www.riden. It's R-I-D-I-N. Not really, okay? So it's www.ridentheriverCowboyFellowship.com. I know it's long, but we decided to go ahead and put the whole name of the church in there, .com. So it's www.ridentheriverCowboyfellowship.com. CowboyFellowship.com. Okay? And you'll see that when you go to my website, you'll see their picture at the top. So you can go to the Women's Minister website and click on their picture on the first page, and it'll go right to the website. So you won't have to remember it. All right, God gives me a lot of acronyms too, and I know that uh, I've got those on the website, but we've got one right here to start off on James, so I'm going to go ahead and share that with you. But let me get a drink real quick. Talking makes my mouth a little dry. Excuse me and thank you. Okay, so salvation. Salvation is God's answer to living victoriously after you receive your full assurance of eternal life. When you trust and accept Jesus as your Savior and ask Him into your heart, old things in your life pass away and new life begins. Get into God's Word and grow up in Him. Start your new relationship with Him now. 
Old things pass away as you take your new journey with God. Listen to and obey His word or instructions. All your answers are in the book, the Bible. Renew your mind and be set free. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Those are wonderful verses to share with someone in salvation. And then I have typed in here, I have all six chapters of James. James I'm sorry, five. James has five chapters in it. So the next pages are the NIV version, just printed on here, straight from the Bible. So you can read those. And then I have a table of contents. And I won't go over all those, but we have like, um, we'll, do it, we'll do it in sections. Like we have James chapter 1, 1 through 4. And we have 5 through 8. And we have 9 through 13. So you can see where they're in little sections. And that's how it goes. Uh, at the back of this book, there's 11 simple steps. And there's also my personal testimony. I try to put those at the end of each book. Some of the uh, titles that we have for some of these uh, scripture readings is Opportunity Knocks. Do you, need no more, do you need more stability? Muddy waters run deep. Who's in control? Wild horses. If. That's it. That's the title. It's the word if. It's a big word. A farmer's mentality and rainy days. All right. Let's start in James. If you want to get your Bibles out, we're going to read the verses in NIV, and there's also a message. But because of time constraints, I may read the NIV, I may read the, the meshes, message, I'm not sure. But if you want to follow along this study and take notes and things so that that's what this is all about, it's a Bible study for you in life application in a different format, in a simple format, and it's bite-sized. And the neat thing about technology is that you can stop the video and you can write things down or you can, you know, you can listen. Me, I listen to things over and over and over again because you can't get it just one time. So if you're really hungry and you really want a, a change in your life and you really want to know how to live for Jesus and how to get there and get help for that, when you have, when you find someone that mentors you or a teacher that you enjoy listening to, listen to them over and over and over and over again. I have had several mentors in the years as God's been growing me up. Right now, in the year of 2011, I've been listening to a lot of Beth Moore. And everybody knows Beth Moore. She's awesome. I love to watch her. She's hilarious. But she is so, so, she's very deep. I mean, she, she has all, the, that's all she does is study. I am not, uh, I don't have the time to do it quite like that. That's not what God has called me. Mine is very simple. It's just, it's, I'd say for the working person, the quiet time, putting it down and, and God applying it. So it's very, very simple. So if you really have more time or you want to dig deeper into a lot of things and, and get more meat in scriptures and Bible studies, I would definitely recommend Beth Moore. She has tons of books. She has CDs. Like I said, I listen to CDs all the time, and I listen to them over and over. I go to bed, sleep. I go to sleep, listen to them there in my car. So I'm thinking, God, I need the help I can get. So my prayer is that God just bring it on, bring it on, bring it on, and it's in there, and it's got to come out somewhere when I need your help because I don't remember all of it. So anyway, we are at James chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. So if you have your Bible, open it to James chapter 1. And I'm going to read the NIV version this morning. All right, here we go. This letter is from James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. James is saying, I am writing to the twelve tribes, the Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings, faith and endurance. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For endurance has a chance, for endurance, I'm sorry, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete and needing nothing. All right. This one I happen to pick out some words and lift up the definitions. Each one of these sections will be a little bit different. A couple of the words that I wanted uh, that jumped off the page and I want to clarify were slave. Slave means servant. So we're say we're servants. All right. Endurance. That's a big word, right? Endurance is the ability to withdraw. I'm sorry. Read this with my glass on. Endurance is the ability to withstand hardship adversity or stress, suffering and trial. So God gives us endurance as we get his word in our heart. It helps us endure. Then we have opportunity. Opportunity is favorable circumstances. 
it's good chance of advancement or progress and we will progress as we become stronger Christians and we know our Father better. Grow means to develop to maturity, to increasing accomplishments and produce. So all these things are what we're going to do as we study God's Word and we learn how to walk like Jesus. And now I'm going to share from my heart at that moment. And this is what God, this is what was in my heart, okay? And I share. We are to be servants. And this, I'm going to be that back. This is what God spoke to me out of these verses. I'm sharing with you what it said to me and what God's word is, is here. So, um, from my heart, we are to be servants for and to God, and we can only do this through the power of the Holy Spirit residing in us. It is not our fleshly nature to obey, follow, or persevere when things happen that hurt, make us angry, or take us out of our comfort zone and goes against our will. We need an increased measure of faith and endurance. There's that word endurance. And faith comes by hearing the Word of God, and you want your faith to grow listening to God's Word daily, and that's what we shared a while ago. Read, study, listen to Christian speakers, pastors, Christian music, switch off some of the things you're reading and watching and listening to. Increase your faith and walk with the Father. Feast on some of the godly things. Change your thinking. Change what goes in. What goes in is going to come out. Your endurance, endurance, remember that word was ability to withstand hardship, suffering, and trials. So our endurance is the ability to withstand hardship, stress, sufferings, and trials come when you draw closer to God. It's all about having a relationship with the Father. You have to know Him intimately, and that means spend some time with Him and include Him in your busy life on a daily basis. And it says friendships grow, and to have friends, it takes time. And we all know that, right? You have to give and invest time in that person, and you also have to earn their trust. This takes time and communication. We learn to trust our Father when we allow Him to speak to us what's best for us. Trials and testings are opportunities. Good chances to progress and grow up as we proceed step by step and win our battles. You have to be dressed for battle though. So be filled with God's fruit of the spirits and carry your sword. Have God's word close to your heart. And then on this one I did say a prayer after sharing what the word of God said and I'll share that also. And I said, Father, I thank you for your life-giving words filled with love, grace, and mercy. You paid it all for me. I can walk with and through this life with victory as you guide my steps. Help me to listen to your still, small voice, to act on what you tell me. I've been learning from you that obedience equals blessings. I want your blessings and favor in my life. Help me to be an imitator and example of your love and grace to those you put in my path today. Give me a continuous hunger and desire to know your word and share it with others. It is my prayer that all who read this book, that you speak to their heart right where they are at today. Give them a hunger and passion for your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Okay, now we're going to go to verses 5 and 8. And I didn't, what was the title for this one? Okay, James 1, verses 1 through 4, what the title for that message was, Opportunity Knocks. Opportunity Knocks. All right. The next one is, do you need more stability in your life? Do you need more stability in your life? Let's look at what James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8 says. And again, we're going to read the NIV version. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask Him, be sure your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed in the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. So the word there is unstable. And the title today is, Do You Need Stability in Your Life? Let's see what... 
excuse me, we have some words. And the words are wisdom, divide, and unstable. So let me share those. Wisdom means knowledge, ability, ability to discern inner qualities. It's insight, it's good sense, and good judgment. It's a wise attitude, wisdom. So with all of our getting, God pour on the wisdom. And divide means to separate. It's disunited. It's apart from what it's marking division. All right? And then unstable means not firm or fixed, not constant, wavering, lacks steadiness, inability to control emotions. Oh, ladies, unstable. As emotional as we are sometimes, so we want God to help us be stable and not have inability to control our emotions. All right, we're not going to go there and touch that. And the acronym for today, imagine that is wisdom. So the acronym for today is wisdom, and this is what it means. Wisdom, <clears throat> excuse me, wisdom is spiritual directions and instructions that help overcome, overcome your daily trials while you memorize and meditate God's Word. It's all in God's Word. God's Word makes all the difference in your life, praise God. All right, let me close this door right quick. I don't live too far from the road, and that road traffic's coming in there. I don't want that on tape. So, what I'm going to share God's Word today from my heart, and what I got out of it, is this. We acquire wisdom, knowledge, discernment, insight, good judgment, and wise attitudes from God and His Word. As always and forever, you will hear me say, you grow. And it all comes from the Word. Oftentimes, I will say, oops, I got a boo-boo right here. Sorry, guys. Proofing as I read this, I didn't realize it. Okay, oftentimes, I'll say this when I start studying and sharing a new scripture. Duh, that's what we're doing, right? Reading, learning, growing, spending time with our Father, and building a relationship with Him. That's what we're doing. Ask God, ask God for a teachable heart, ladies. And a new wisdom every single day. It's new every day. You've got to start new and fresh every single day. Yesterday's word won't help. Won't, you need new words. Yesterday was for yesterday. Yesterday's grace, yesterday's prayers for yesterday. You need new grace, new prayers. Started out with new stuff today. <clears throat> Ask God for a teachable heart and new wisdom every day. Don't stop asking. Thankful to serve. Pray without ceasing. How do you do that? How do you pray without ceasing? Good question. You might say, I have kids running around. I have a very stressful and demanding job. What are you talking about, girl? What are you talking about? Well, it means to have an attitude of prayer. I, can, I, I can't pray 24-7. None of us can. I can think of him throughout the day as I eat, I shower, I dress for work, I enjoy a cup of coffee, I drive to work or the store, making copies at work, walking from one room to the other, sometimes asking him to remind me what I went to the other room for because I already forgot before I got there, and many other ways. All right? We can pray any time. Ask for help, wisdom, guidance, and much-needed answers in dealing with children or co-workers. I can ask help for any time within my heart. Nobody around me even knows. I can be at my desk working on the outside and praying on the inside, and no one knows the difference because it's, it's quietly in my head. And I'm blessed and fortunate on my job that I can listen to Christian music. Um, even a simple statement like, help me God. I don't know what to do. That's a prayer. See how simple it is? It's just it's just talking to him. It's not it's not hard. It's very, very simple. This ministry is simple. My heart is simple. Sharing with you is simple. God doesn't want it to feel like it's difficult. He wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants to love you and encourage you and guide you and direct you and give you the hope that you've been looking for. Uh, this is praying without ceasing, or praying all the time, what we're sharing. We're also instructed to give thanks at all times. God's Word says to give thanks at all times. This prompts a new prayer right now as I write this lesson. 
Help me remember to thank you for the small things and difficult times. Who can do that without his divine assistance? No one. No one. Grace equals divine assistance for daily living. I like that. I made a plaque with that. It says grace equals divine assistance for daily living. And I'm not sure where that came from. I think that actually when I looked up the word grace, the definitions, this was one definition of it, and I just grabbed onto it and held onto it and go back to the time because of grace. I need grace all the time. It's divine assistance for daily living. The scripture tells us, what we're studying right now, the scripture tells us not to waver or lack steadiness, not to be in inconsistent, okay? So, how can I be steady and how am I supposed to be consistent? Ask for it. It just takes time and more time and time and some more time. It's a, a continual process until we get to heaven. Where are your priorities? Where are your priorities? Do you need to make a few changes in your life to become more consistent in obeying what God wants you to do and not just do as you please? Mm, ouch, right? Father, I come to you in Jesus' name and I praise you for who you are, what Jesus did for me and my many blessings. I pray now that you fill me and all those in my family, friends, co-workers, and those I minister to with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You help us walk in your way, a way that is pleasing to you. Help us to bear fruit, study your word, be strengthened by your power, and help us to be steadfast, patient, and joyful. I give you praise. Amen. Okay. Let me see what time it is, ladies. What time did I say I started? I think I started at 7. I'm going to have to wrap this up. Wow, this goes fast. Okay. These are some prayer examples, and I'm, I'm going to give you some scripture, so... Um, if you want to write them down, or you can pause this and get it. We've got prayer examples if you're needing some help and you feel like you want a little guidance there uh, in addition to what we're sharing. Matthew 6, 9-13. Colossians 1, 9-12. Luke 11, 1-4. Luke 3, 21-22. A lot of them are in Luke. Luke 5, 16 and Luke 6, 12, and 13. And this is a prayer from Scripture, and we'll wrap up video number two. Father, help me to be humble and honor others, to live in harmony, accept your discipline, know your word never changes. God, straighten my crooked paths and save me from my enemies. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Give me endurance in hard times, give me confidence, bless my work and labor of hands, enliven my speech, help me to think of others first, and help me not to be selfish. Amen. Okay, ladies, so that's video two. When we come back on video number three, we'll pray and start out with an acronym, the word opportunity. So we'll see you on video number three. God bless you, Barbara Chapman, Salt Shaking Sisters. Bye-bye.